What's up, writers? Welcome back to another day writing about reading. We are going to be looking at how we can read closely in order to be an analytic writer. Someone who thinks about what they're reading and writes about it, which might sound kind of like what we've been doing, but it's more than that. Imagine if you were watching soccer, which I hate soccer. That's right. Fight me. I hate soccer. But what I'll say is it's because I don't understand it. I watch soccer and I just follow the ball. And I'm like, why is it going backwards? And I don't understand. It's boring to me. But when I really pay attention to the announcer, I notice that the announcer is seeing all these things that I had no idea about. They're seeing things that are not happening where the ball is. All of a sudden, we've got a forward, a wing, something like that. And the announcer is saying, oh, great pace by the wing coming up the left side, cutting towards the goal. And I had no idea that there was another player. I've just been watching the ball. And I kind of realized that when I was watching Gonzaga this year in basketball. I realized it's a different sport. But hear me out. Even though I like basketball much more than soccer, and I've played it much more than soccer, when I watch, I normally am still just watching the ball. But boy, watching in Zaga, when they just when I'm just watching the ball, there's not much going on. The ball might not really be moving at all, other than a few swings around the perimeter. Everyone else is moving, though. And that's when I started to realize that basketball even was more exciting to watch, at least when it's played that way. And your stories are much more exciting, and there's much greater depth to them. There's more going on when you're looking at all the things around that main character. When you're looking between the elements of a story, and we can see then how those elements influence each other. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's check it out. Okay, so the question is, what story elements actually make up a story? If you're in my class, you'd share about that with each other, but you'd probably come up with something pretty similar to this, that there's setting and characters and plot. And if you were really on top of your game, you might have thought, well, yeah, there's protagonists and antagonists. Those are types of characters. And you might have said, oh, there's really important major characters. And then secondary ones, like, you know, Neville Longbottom. <laughs> Sorry, Neville. Also, though, in the plot, we could call that the story arc. And there's the main plot, the one that probably involves Harry Potter, say, or Katniss. And then there's subplots going along, like that might have to do with their relationships or winning the house cup that aren't really the main story of the story. Within that, of course, in the story arc, there is some things you probably thought of, like the rising action, the climax, the falling action, and the resolution. And if you thought of all those things, great job. But what do we do with those things? I mean... If you were to look in your journal, have you even written about the settings? Have you noticed some of the symbolic things going on based upon mood or anything like that? Right now, you should take a moment and you should pause the video to look at your own journal and realize what's been going on in your journal. Have you been noticing things other than the ball, other than the main character? I'll, I'll wait for a second, let you pause, and then I'm going to keep going. And we're back. So with that idea in our mind, what could we do actually to help us see or visualize some of these elements of the story and then how they relate or influence each other? If we looked at uh, the example at the top of this ways of visualizing relationships chart, you'd see that it says, how do they interact? And if you notice in small writing, it says story mountain. Boy, that's one of my favorite lessons in the sixth grade narrative unit. When we talk about how the actions and external factors going on in a story are related to the internal factors like thoughts and emotions. And if we line them up like we're supposed to, we could actually see how they interact with each other. 
And we would call that like kind of cause and effect. They're related. They have an influence. So just like in number one there, it says cause and effect. So because something happens, this, or because of the way something is, this happens. Cause, effect. And then we also have comparing and contrasting down there. So outside versus inside. T-chart. You've done those, I'm sure, since like first or second grade. It's just noticing the way one thing is, noticing the way the other is, so we can look at them together and say, okay, hmm, Harry Potter's relationships, one character, another character. We can also use a Venn diagram to do some of that work as well. That's the bell ring. Thank you, school, for ringing that bell. So anyways, um, Venn diagram. I don't need to explain that. You know how to use it. You've compared characters with it before. Now, we want to think about two story elements that could possibly be something that influence each other. And so we're going to think about Stolen Party. We're going to think about Rosara and then the setting. But the setting, specifically at one point in the story. So I'm going to read this section, and I want you trying to notice what Rosara's feelings are, how she's acting, as it relates to her being here, and in this case, her being in the kitchen. Rosara wanted to make sure. Carefully, she entered the kitchen, and there she saw it, deep in thought, inside its cage. It looked so funny that the girl stood there for a while, watching, and later, every so often, she would slip out of the party unseen and go and admire it. Rosara was the only one allowed into the kitchen. Senora Ines had said, You, yes, but not the others. They are much too boisterous. They might break something. Rosara had never broken anything. She even managed the jug of orange juice, carrying it from the kitchen into the dining room. She held it carefully and didn't spill a single drop. And Senora Ines had said, are you sure you can manage a jug as big as that? Of course she could manage. She wasn't a Butterfingers like the others. Like that blonde girl with the bow in her hair. Okay. So, right now, pause and think to yourself, so what's going on here? How is Rosara influenced by being in the kitchen? So, to continue, if we're looking at cause and effect, like we'd said before, how does that relate to what we just saw? Well, being in the kitchen. Because Rosara was in the kitchen, what effect happened? It says, being in the kitchen affects Rosara. We know. When she's in the kitchen, though, she feels special. Like, she gets to help out and is trusted more than the other kids. She is allowed into the behind-the-scenes places, and this makes her feel special. When she's in the kitchen, she gets to look at the monkey, which was the main reason she wanted to come to the party in the first place. So we notice that Rosara actually is excited about being in the kitchen and being a helper, which is a tricky thing when we know at the end of the story that Senora Ines calls her my pet and tries to pay her for this. It makes this weird idea of, boy, I really like to feel special and to do these jobs and to be behind the scenes, but it was just because I wanted to help and be helpful, not because I wanted to be paid to be a mini maid. So we can start to then think about, oh, this cause and effect relationship could have some deeper implications for the rest of the story. In fact, it kind of makes me have some connections as far as, boy, if I had a student that I wanted to make sure was occupied, had something to do. I might give him a task like, you're going to be my special helper. You're going to pass some papers out. It almost feels the same way. Like, Senora Ines is going, hey, my pet, like, my daughter doesn't really want you here, and I don't really want you here, but you are going to do these special jobs. And then, hopefully, she doesn't get in the way. Now, that's bell okay I guess I won't film it this time anymore but that thought I had about that sort of power that Senor Ines has and is exerting over Rosara 
is just some thoughts I might have after I can see a graphic where we've been able to see the influence of one thing like the setting on a character. So now would be a great time to talk to your partner, but I'm sure you're just watching this on your own or you might be. If you were to talk to partners or think in your head, you should consider how to compare characters. Let me rephrase that. I would want you to use these bullets to compare how characters respond to some events like for Zara, when she finds out that her mom doesn't really want her to go to the birthday, even though she was invited, you'd find, you could compare how characters react to the setting. Like we just saw with Rosara in the kitchen, we could compare how a character feels or acts at different points in that story arc. We could use setting at different points of the plot to see how that affects the story. And then we could look at how a character feels in different settings. My favorite one to consider is the fifth Harry Potter book. Boy, those characters are like deeply depressed. And I wonder if part of it is that evil house that they're in. Could be. So if I was you, I would consider those and I would make at least four entry ideas. Okay. Maybe start by just writing the entries down and then you can come back later. Like you might write down, say if you were reading the fifth Harry Potter book, um, how does Harry's mood change when he's in the black house? So far, here are the things that we've covered in class. The most recent one was today, connecting story elements and then analyzing ways those elements influence each other. And I want to emphasize influence each other. It's not just writing down, there's a big connection here between this room and this person and then not really saying anything more. We want to describe how one is influencing the other. It could be that it seems like when this character is in this room, their mood is different. They seem to be sad. And then we could actually add in evidence and explain by analyzing how that evidence is supported or is supporting your conclusion that this character say is sad. Okay, class, uh, that's what I got. And until I see you next time, happy writing.